Hey guys! And gals! Today, we will have a look at a few ways we can create richer sounds, sounds that are maybe a bit more interesting and unique. And this idea came from my Patreons, so thank you Patreons for the idea and also for your support. So here we have a sequence with the Modulo sequencer and the VCO from Borg Audio. Let's for now just use the sine wave and see how it sounds like. So this is the, this is the sequence. Okay, very nice. So the first thing we can try is make this waveform a bit more rich in harmonics. So let's use a wave folder for this and I will use the one from Repelsen, this one here. And let's see how this sounds like. So I will send the sine wave to the fold and then to the mixer. Let's also have a look on the scope. You can see exactly what it's doing. You can see I can fold it and add, uh, add harmonics. Very nice. So this is the first thing we can do. Of course, we can do this in a different way and use an already richer waveform like a sawtooth, for example, and send it through a filter. So let's use tangents from Vult this one here and let's listen to the sawtooth wave through the low pass filter maybe add some resonance so this is the sawtooth through a low pass filter and a better thing that we can do is to mix both waves so let's use the mixer from lindenberg research which will look like this um, a cool thing about this mixer it uh, has its own built-in vca that we will use also later and um, but for now let's mix those two waves so one from the folder one from the filter so to wave from the filter and let's listen to this so this is the sine wave and now let's mix in the so tooth So already we have something a bit more um, interesting. Now we don't have to stop there. We can mix even another sound. So let's use Blick from Vult. This one here. Let's use, of course, the same sequence, the same pitch information. And let's mix this also together with the other waves. Oh yeah. So now we have three different sounds, three different waveforms mixed. So we have something a bit more interesting going on. Um, and this is the first way we can make a sound richer by mixing different waveforms and creating a new, more exciting sound. Now this sounds a bit static. So let's add some modulation. We will use Caudal for this also from Vult. Now Caudal will output, if we look again on the scope, it will output smooth random voltages that we can use for modulation. But of course you can use also stepped modulation like sample and hold. So let's do this. Um, let's send one to the fold amount. Let's listen to this also. So this is just uh, modulating the fold amount. So we have already some movement. Let's use one to modulate the cutoff point of the filter. Oh yeah. And let's use another one to modulate the pulse width of Blick. Oh yes. Let's mix in the other voices. So nice we have na uh, now we have nice movement. Okay, and now let's add an envelope for the amplitude with using the built-in VCA of the mixer. So let's use the AD envelope from Nischi, which will look like this. I will trigger it with the same clock we are using and um, to trigger the sequencer and this will go to the VCA input. Oh yeah. 
maybe something like this. Very nice. Another thing we can do is modulate um, the pitch of the VCO with a really short envelope to add a bit more um, punchiness to the sound. So let's use another AD envelope from Nischi. Let's send this to the FM input of the oscillator. Again, trigger it with the same clock. And now let's start introducing some FM and take the decay down, of course, just a bit. And let's see. You can hear this if I take the FM out and now bring it in again. So you can hear this click, this punch, which will add also a bit to the sound. Um, everything is subtle, but uh, together it adds a lot to the sound. Um, and you know what? Let's mix in another oscillator. So we will use basal again, Volt which is this one here. Let's of course set it, send it, uh, use the pitch information. Let's also take it an octave down, so it plays an octave down for everything else. And now this we will not mix together with the rest of the signals um, in this uh, mixer from Lindenberg. We will give it its own channel on the mixer, just like this. Oh yes. Very nice. Now I like to keep the very low frequencies separate from the other signals and process them also less or not at all if it's possible. So that's why I use a different channel. Of course, you can do this differently. You can mix them and you can mix this in with the other voices if you want. And, but if you notice, this voice will not be affected by the amplitude envelope. It's not going through the VCA of the mixer. So it will be always on, which will give us a bit more depth, a bit more stability to the sound. This is how it sounds like by, by its own. So again, really low frequencies. I hope you are with headphones or good speakers so you can hear this. Adds another layer to the sound. Now a good thing to do always, especially in VCV Rec, where everything is tuned perfectly to the note C by default, is to manually detune the oscillators a bit from one another to add even more movement to the sound. So let's detune them a bit uh, uh, using the fine tune. I'm just holding control on my keyboard and I'm moving it just a bit. This is the VCO, this is bleak, and this is basal just a bit again, so they are not really perfectly in tune with one another. Very nice. Okay, now let's add some global control over the tone of this sound. So let's use another filter and this one will be Neo. Again, Lindenberg Research, um, which is a really nice sounding distortion filter. So let's send the... Uh, from the mixer. You see, I'm not sending the low frequencies, just the voices from the mixer to the filter. Let's see, let's add some distortion. Oh yeah, some resonance. Oh yes. So we have now global control over the different voices here. Over the timbre of the voices. Very nice, okay. Another good way to add some interest to the sound is modulate the decay time of the amplitude envelope. This time we will use sample and hold. I will use the one from Bog Audio. Let's trigger it with the same clock um, from the main clock. Um, and now since we don't have an attenuator for the decay time here on the AD envelope, um, we can set the range of the sample and hold in the right click menu to let's say negative positive one volt. So we have all in all two volts of change. It will close the envelope a bit and will open it um, or the decay time. So let's use it. Oh yeah. So we have even more movement. Very nice. 
effects. Okay, so until now we had mixing waveforms, we had adding modulation, we had adding also pitch, uh, pitch modulation to add some punch to the sound. Now, something I really like doing is also using noise. So there are two ways in this case we can mix in noise. Let's use the noise module from VCV, which will look like this. And now we can experiment with mixing different noise types through the mixer. Let's open the cutoff all the way up. Let's start with white noise, for example. It will sound like this. So we have some brightness in the sound. We can use pink noise, which is darker. Oh yes, we can use the red noise, which is even darker. Very nice, but something I like doing more is actually sending the noise to the CV input of the filter's cutoff point, and by that mixing in the noise in an unexpected place, which will add a lot to the sound. So let's take the white noise to the CV input of the filter. Let's close it a bit just so we can hear also the effects of it. And let's open the attenuator a bit. the sound but it's being mixed through the CV input of the cutoff point I think this is a good time to add some reverb maybe a plateau with a sand reverb oh yeah and again this will not affect the very low frequencies coming from basal because it has its own channel Again, this is how we started with just a sine wave. You can hear the punch from the FM. And now we have this. Yes. Okay, very nice. Now, something I really like doing is some parallel processing on different frequency bands. So let's use Lala from Studio 6 plus 1. Um, now we have two outputs. We have the high that will output everything above the crossover point, which will be, if I solo this, and let's use the after the filter. So we have the crossover point is, in this case, around 260 Hertz. If we take it a bit up, let's say to about 500. So now everything above 500 Hertz will come out of the high output. Very nice. And now we have also the low output that will output everything below 500 Hertz. So you see I'm going uh, opening the filter, but we get no change because this will be only below 500 Hertz in this case. Very nice. So what we can do, let's first of all set it to about a thousand, let's say something like this. And now we will use a um, chrono blob to add some delay only to the high frequencies. Let's sync it with our clock. Maybe change the delay times a bit to something like this. Very nice. And now because we already have this signal on different, uh, uh, a different channel on the mixer, right? I'm sending this also directly to the mixer. We don't need this signal once again through the delay. So I will take the wet signal all the way up. So we have only the delayed signal and not the original one, because again, we have it already on the mixer. So now let's use the high output to the delay and send this to the mixer. Let's take maybe the levels a bit down and add some reverb. And now, very nice. And now only the high frequencies will go through the delay after the filter. So we get another layer and a more richer sound. So now if I play with the filter a bit. Oh yes. We can add some more feedback. Ok, 
okay, we can also process now the low frequencies. Um, so let's use the um, Hass delay from Sonus, which will look like this. Let's use the low um, frequencies, the low output to this Hass delay. Now let's use Debriatus to add some folding to this. So I will send the left and the right. What this Hass delay will do, it will delay the left from the right a bit. So we get this stereo spread. So now we'll just add some folding. And now let's send this to the mixer and have a listen. Very nice. So now again, we, everything that's below about 950 Hz is going to the Hass delay and the Briatus. And now if I take the delay all the way down, we have a mono signal. But if I start introducing some delay, it will be a bit more spreaded left and right. Or a bit more spread. <laughs> Let's add some reverb to this. Channel 4. Oh yeah. Let's listen to this. Maybe take the levels also down. Let's add even another layer with clouds. All of this is again one sequence, one sound source. You can see how we can develop this sound, make it a bit richer. Okay, so we'll use clouds. In this case, we will use the signal before the filter. So we'll use the signal from the mixer. And now let's set the blend all the way up. So again, we have only the wet signal because I don't want the dry signal again in the mixer. Let's take the levels a bit down. Let's add stereo spread, so it's nice and spread in the stereo field. Some feedback and lots and lots of reverb. Now let's take the size and texture all the way up, so the grains are nice and smeared. Maybe take it also an octave up, right click on the pitch knob, hit one. So we have another layer in a different register. And now let's start generating some grains. First of all, let's connect it to the mixer. Very nice. Oh yeah. So we have another layer. Okay, let's have a listen to those layers one by one. So here we have the sound, the original sound. Right, mixing waveforms going through. Filter. Through a Lopez filter. Then we have, oh yes, we have basal adding low frequencies which are unprocessed in any way. Then we have delay only on the high frequencies. We have some widening and some folding on the low frequencies. Oh man. Maybe a bit lower. Yeah. And then we have clouds adding another layer. And again, you don't have to use all of these tricks at once, all of these modules at once, but this can give you some ideas what to add to your chain of modules to have a more interesting sound. Now here down, I have some drums. Um, just for, as an example, I have here the gate sequencer triggering tremor as a kick drum snare from SV Modular and the Hyatt from Hora. Let's listen to this in solo. Just a second. Very nice. Now what I'm doing here already to add some interest to the sound, if I take the delay, I have here delay on the height, if I take it out, you see I have four hits for the closed hat and one hit for the open hat. So I use less hits, but I add some delay 
to add this groove and this uh, sort of velocity feel to the sound. So let's mix in the delay. So it sounds like someone is really playing this uh, hi-hat. Very nice. Let's listen to everything together. Oh yeah. Okay, very nice. Now a nice um, way we can add some interest to the drums is by adding another layer again, but this time we will use a vocoder. So let's use the vocoder from Surge, this one here. Now the modulator signal will be our drums, so let's use them from the mixer. Again, parallel processing, so I'm sending the original signal to the mixer, but I'm also um, adding another layer in parallel. Now the carrier sound, the sound that we will actually hear, let's use noise. So I will use the black noise output from this noise module from VCV. Let's have a listen to this in solo with the drums. Oh yes. So we have some vocoding going on. Let's change the settings here. Oh yeah. Very nice. So those are the drums. We can also add some reverb. Oh yeah, maybe take the levels down a bit. Maybe take out the low frequencies a bit to give some space to the original drums. So this is without a vocoder now. Maybe take them a bit up, which is nice, but again, we can add some interest, some something new to the sound, which will sound like this overall. Oh yeah. Very nice. Now another thing I like doing, and this I do with uh, all sorts of different types of voices, not only drums, I record a few seconds of the voice and then play it back in reverse to add uh, even another layer. Um, so let's use the complex Complex, simpler, complex, simpler from Nischi, which is great for stuff like this. In this case, I will record only the hi-hats from the delay. So let's record like, I don't know, like five seconds, something like this. Already I will save this file so it will be available with the patch. Sample, very nice. Okay, and now let's have a listen to this in solo. So this is again the Hi-Hats. Very nice. Now let's play this in reverse. So I will right click on the speed knob, hit minus one, and it will play in reverse. We can also take it an octave lower so it plays slower. Oh yeah. And now let's try to sync it with our drums. So what we will do, let's use our drums. And now we can use a divided clock to trigger the start point, so it will start always um, together with the drums. I will use a divided by four clock. Oh yeah. Now just a matter of finding a nice spot for it to start. Oh yeah, this is nice. Also here we can add some reverb. Very nice, let's listen to everything together. So again, just adding another layer to the sound to add more interest, to make the sound a bit richer if it's drums, if it's a sequence like this. Another thing we can do, add more movement, to add more interest, is to use sample and hold to modulate to modulate the p 
panning of the different voices, so here I'm triggering it with a clock. By the way, those modules here, the teleport, as you can see, um, instead of sending the clock directly here down, like those cables here, and have cables all over the place, I can use teleport to teleport <laughs> cables um, between different rows. So here, for example, I have the main clock, the multiplied clock, going to the first input, and it will come out from the first output of this second teleport. So I can just send cables uh, without getting too messy. So anyway, now let's set the range of this uh, sample and hold to, let's say, negative positive 3 volts. So it will not modulate um, hard left and hard right. And let's modulate the panning of the reversed hi-hats and the vocoder. Oh yes, just to add more interest to the sound again. More movement, movement is life. Okay, here I have another voice. Now here, again, something interesting with pitch modulation. I have the phrase sequencer sequencing and the complex oscillator from life form modular. This is going through delay and reverb. Let's have a listen to this first. And then I will show you, I have it here. Let's solo it. And let's mute here this. Okay. So this is the voice. I have two oscillators here in the complex oscillator. For now, the delay and reverb are out. But what I want to show you is this drift generator that will add drift to the pitch. So I'm sending the pitch information through drift to the complex oscillator and it will introduce detuning of the sequence of the pitch information that will add lots and lots and lots of movement and lots of interest. So let's add the depth. Oh yeah. Already you can hear that it's detuned, it's going up, it's going down. Add some reverb and delay. Oh yes. FM. I love this oscillator. And again, with the drift generator, again, pitch modulation can add a lot to a somewhat dry sound. Let's listen to everything together. Oh yeah! So what we had, we had mixing different sound sources to create a new sound, we did this with the VCMA from Lindberg Research, mixing a few different voices, mixing in some low frequencies in a different channel just to keep them um, detained from one another. We had adding modulation, in this case we used caudal, we had also, um, added also punch with FM and a really short envelope. We add some movement with detuning our voices if it's manually or with using something like the drift generator. We use parallel processing like the delay on the high frequencies, the widening and folding on the low frequencies. Um, again, using delay for widening, using delay for adding groove and sort of velocity changes for the hi-hats. Um, we had recording a sample of the voice and playing it back in different ways like we, we did with the complex simpler adds a lot to the sound 
I really hope that you will use some of these uh, techniques in your patches and that was it. Thank you again Patreons for the idea and also for the support. Like always, there will be a link in the description to this patch. Feel free to download it and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.